Sega. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today in this video, we're gonna be talking about uh, Sigong's Kung Fu, and Sigong means the 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 father to the Sifu. So I'm Sifu of Freddy's Modern Kung Fu. This is my father, and um, he just finished the Chicago Triathlon today. And I thought this would be a good um, video to, to basically show his progression in his in his craft and his kung fu. He does triathlon and marathon every single year. He hasn't skipped one year since he started. So we're gonna go into detail about more about what he does, and we we'll just ask him a few questions. So how old are you now? I'm 69 years old. So he's 69. What age did you start exercising? I started exercising since I was 9 years old. And then, how many triathlons have you completed? I have completed 15 triathlons. How many marathons have you completed? I have completed 22 uh, marathons since 1999 wow. and uh, 20 of them in Chicago and one in uh, Louisville, Kentucky and one in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio so uh, the total is 22 so 22 marathons and you said 15 triathlons yeah. right so that's a total of how many medals? Uh, total the, all together 37 alright so a total of 37 medals and they're all over here not even one of them are missing, so I, I, I was joking around saying that it's even an accomplishment just not to lose one for all those years. Mm -hmm. So they're all here, and you know, they're all, um, we didn't take the time to put them all in order, but if you look through the video and you, you mark down all the dates, you'll see that they're all sequential one right after another. You started in 1999, right? Yeah, 1999. So not, started in 1999, 1999 that was the, the, the marathon. Yeah, the marathon. The, the triathlon, I started in the, the year 2005. Okay, so you started the triathlon in 2005. Once you started the 1999 marathon, he's been participating in the marathon ever since. And then he started the, the triathlon in 2005, and he's been doing it every year ever since. Now it's 2019 that he just finished the triathlon um, today. So... It's all there, all the medals, 37, and then what does a triathlon consist of? Because not everybody knows, but what does it consist of? Well, a triathlon consists of uh, swim, bike, and run. Okay, so and how the, long is the swim? This, uh, the international distance. I participate in the international distance. It's uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.93 mile. That's a little bit short of one mile swim. Uh, 24.8 miles bike and 6.2 miles run. Okay, so that's the triathlon. And not everybody knows, but how, how, what does the marathon consist of? The marathon consists of 26.2 miles run. Okay. And then what motivated you to start you know, doing triathlons and marathons. What would it be? What would it be? It's very hard to answer you because uh, I like doing these kind of things. And I think it's uh, it motivate me to do this because it's good for your health. If you keep doing that, that's a kind of good exercise. Swim, bike, run, you know. Just so like the Kung Fu, it's good. In, I consider this to be a kind of kung fu too. Go ahead. To me. Yeah. Yeah. Sigang, what is how does it feel to know that there are a lot of um, a lot of athletes in their twenties and thirties who can't complete the marathons, but you at sixty nine you you can complete the whole race. Yeah. So how does that con like with your kung fu, like how does it feel to know that you can still outrun a lot of folks who are younger than you? Um, I don't know if I can outrun the people <laughs> the younger than me, but mm -hmm. I just know I can finish it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
Some people are faster, some people are slower. Mm -hmm. But I, every time I finish the race. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's so, impressive. how many more triathlons and marathons do you think that you're going to participate in? This question is very hard to answer. This Today, I feel good. And uh, I can, you know, participate in this uh, triathlon and finish it. Two months from now, we will be in marathon. Mm. I think I'm going to, you know, I already sign up. I'm going to do it. But you have to, f by that day, you have to feel good. Yeah, yeah you know, if sometimes if you don't feel well, you cannot do it. See, it's very hard to answer you. Mm. Because but you pretty today much just... you feel good, maybe next week you don't feel well. Mm -hmm. But the, the race day is very important. That day you have to feel good. Yeah. If you don't feel well, there's no way you can do it, you know. Especially the triathlon, you go in the water. One mile, almost one mile, you stay almost 45, 50 minutes in the water. Mm. You have to feel good. Or you don't go inside, you know, the water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what is your best marath marathon time ever? My best marathon time ever was... Uh, Four hours and one minute, fifty-seven seconds. It's close to four hours and two sec, uh, two minutes. And uh, I, I, I got this time, not just one time. Maybe four, or five times, maybe mm. six times. Mm. Above this, uh, four hours and one, two, three minutes, four, five, six minutes. And uh, after that, I slowed down. My my time dropped. You know, from four hours and few minutes down to maybe 4 hours and 20 minutes, 4 hours and 30 minutes. And last year my time was above close to 5 hours, maybe 4 hours and 50 some minutes. How old were you when you, you got the best time for the marathon? Uh, the marathon, the best time I got was 49 years old. Okay. That's 1999, yeah, okay. the first marathon, the first, first marathon, 1999, 2000, 2001, 2003, my, my time was four hours and maybe a few minutes, but after that, then yeah. <laughs> I dropped, you know, maybe mm. four hours and 20 minutes, mm. but sometimes it, the, the weather is very important, okay. yeah, when the weather is very hot or very cold, Mm -hmm. It affects you, you, you know, your, your, your performance. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it can help you or break your race, you know. Yeah. yeah. One year, you know, the, the, temp, the, the temperature was 90, 90 degrees. So hot. Yeah, that's warm. Yeah, that, that year, 2007, my time was 5 hours and 22 minutes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, I was dehydrated, mm -hmm. not in the water, the water station ran out of water, you know, we try to get water, when we get to the, the water station, no water, oh, yeah, wow. because Because yeah. everybody's so thirsty, yes. yeah. yeah everybody's thirsty. What is your best triathlon ever time? The best triathlon time was three hours and six minutes. Three hours and six minutes and some seconds. I forgot exactly how many seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, what, what is more difficult, the triathlon or marathon, in your opinion? Well, my opinion is like this. If you're a good swimmer, triathlon is easy. You know, if you finish the swim course, you know, a bicycle and a run is easy. Yeah. 24.8 miles bicycle. You know, cycling mm -hmm. for a lot of people is easy. But run six point two miles is for some people easy. But if you're not a good swimmer, then triathlon is very hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So which one is easier for you? Uh, marathon 
year to run 26.2 miles. It's not, not easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, not easy. easy for me. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. Because right. marathon, when you get to mile 17 or 18, you know, it, your body tells you to stop. Mm. Because yeah. you, your leg gets so tired. And uh, you, your body tells you to stop. But your mind tells you to keep going mm -hmm. to the finish line. So that at that that time is your mind versus your body. Your body tell you to, to stop, but your mind tell you to keep going to the finish line. But the, the triathlon, if I, I complete the swim course, that is easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After you finish swim, you get on the bike, twenty four point eight miles is it's not that hard, you know. Mm -hmm. Especially when you ride those uh, road bike, the 10 speed. Yeah. Alright, so what motivates you to keep training year after year? What motivates me <laughs> to train year after year? It's a good question. A good question. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I, I love. To do doing this kind of sports, you know, this like swimming, you know, running and biking. You know. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love doing this. There's something that you do on a on a regular basis, though, going swimming and riding yeah. your bike too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sounds it's, like it's a part of lifestyle, right, <laughs> seafood? Yeah, it's kind Siga. of lifestyle. Yeah. Because I I I I've been doing this kind of sports, you know, as swimming, you know running, biking, since I was very young, mm -hmm. since I was in Hong Kong. You know, back then, the only sport you can do is swimming, because Hong Kong is an island, mm -hmm. surrounded by water. You know, it doesn't cost you anything to, to go swimming. Yeah. You go to, the, you know, to the, the beach, you do the swim. doesn't have to spend any money. How was the triathlon today? Uh, today's triathlon is... It's, to me, it's not, not challenging. Because they eliminate the swim, the swim portion. Mm. So the, actually, today is not a triathlon. Today, we just do the bike and run. Mm -hmm. The official, you know, they eliminate the swim portion because the, of the weather. Mm. So, so windy. Yeah. The wind creates a lot of high wave in the lake front. The water is so choppy. Mm -hmm. So for safety concern, the, the official, they cancel this uh, swim portion. Yeah. So instead of, we have a, uh, this, the, the place where we start the swim, mm -hmm. they told us, now you don't go to the water, you run back to the transition area. Mm -hmm. from, the, from the swim start, run back to the transition area to get the bicycle, it's about a mile. So you, 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 you run about a mile, get back to the transition area to get the bicycle, and then start the bike. Mm -hmm. And then the bicycle portion and the run portion the same, except the, the swim portion. Uh, they skip it. You know? yeah. yeah. That's good. Though. It's good though that they take into consideration the safety of the athletes, yeah. you know, yeah. during that Very time. Important. So yeah. I was happy to hear that they canceled the swimming part too. <laughs> uh, so his, his time for the triathlon today was 2 hours 49 um, minutes and 21 seconds. The overall, 3,182 people competed and he was ranked 2,561. Out of the males, 2,213 people competed. He ranked 1,945. From his age range, from 65 to 69, 24 people competed. He ranked number 13. So that's his record. And here is it up close, even verifies his age, 69. 
out of you know out of Skokie it says his bid number and everything. That's his time. Um, I think that it's amazing. And then here's the packet. It verifies the same information. There you see his age, 69. I think it's, it's, it's great that technology allows to have these accurate readings like by the second of when you start and when you finish. Um, ranking the people overall from all the people that competed and even like ranking him according to his um, age bracket. Um, it just really gives great motivation to be able to to gauge like where you're at when it comes to the times and stuff like this. I wanted to make the video because it's a big accomplishment for him to especially do this year after year after year for so long since 1999 attaining all these medals and he's been training before since the time of um, since he was nine years old so he was doing all this exercise before these medals but then once he's decided to enter into the into these events now is tracking like his progress from 1999 all the way up to he this time but essentially it's not 1999 it goes all the way back down to like 1960 until 2019 that he's been training for all these years and that's what Kung Fu is all about. It's about discipline and just a lifestyle. It's not like he just got one of these medals and then all of a sudden, that's it. Then it's over. No, it's like every single year, you keep progressing, you keep training. Now, his times might not be getting better every single time because, you know, we're getting older, you know, and... Your, your body is not going to be able to get certain times when you're 69 compared to when you're like 25. But the fact that, that he still keeps doing it, that's what real Kung Fu is all about. It's kind of like somebody who's 25, he runs a marathon in under three hours and, and then he loves to talk about how great that is. But then he only did one marathon and then he's, say he's 69 and he did one marathon. That to me is not the real Kung Fu. The real Kung Fu is doing it consistently year after year after year and year after year until you pass away and that's pretty much what he's demonstrating right now and not only that but they don't pay him to do this stuff he pays them to do it yeah. so you know that <laughs> yes. shows even more because he could he could essentially run the marathon on his own yeah. by himself and not pay any money but he pays them, and when he pays them, when he completes it, he gets a medal. Not only that, but they mark his time. It's all official. It's all in the computers. They, they mark his age. That's pretty much like putting everything in stone that this person actually did this at this time, at this age, and this is what his results were. So that shows a lot of dedication because not only am they not paying him, He's paying them money to do it. So imagine paying somebody $300 so you could run 26.2 miles. I mean, that in itself is admirable because not a lot of people would even run 26.2 miles for free. Or you pay them money. You pay them $300, a lot of people won't run 26.2 miles. <laughs> right? So for somebody to even pay money to do something like that, that's another thing that just shows the discipline, you know, and I, I take that discipline from him and I put it into the school. And he still trains with me three times a week, every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday, he's always on time, he's always training. Everybody's joking that he's always there first, you know, and like, that's what Gung Fu is. And then on top of that, he still goes to the gym outside of the school. So he'll go to LA Fitness and train at LA Fitness. He'll, he'll bike just for fun. Just go biking. He'll run. He'll swim in the lake for fun. And he still trains at the school three times a week. And he does this. So, but the combat is something that 
that I help him with because that's not his specialty, but that's become my specialty. His specialty is more like the cardio training. My specialty might be more the strength training and the flexibility. Like everybody has what they're good at. And the nice thing is we come together and we all share our strengths and then we all grow together. But he is the Seagong of the school and you see the Gong Fu not just in the way he looks because if you look at him he didn't look like he's 69. You know, he looks like he's like 50 or something. <laughs> yes. Right? You, if you take on, <laughs> if you see him in some of these videos doing the arm wrestling, his his biceps, the muscles are just like popping out. He's like pretty much beating everybody in the in the in the arm wrestle in the school, you know. And then when he when he's like when you ever take his, his shirt off, he's all ripped up. I mean, <laughs> like that you can see the gung fu just by looking at him. And you don't even have to see the medals, but now that you see the medals. It's just like proof that this is real, you know, like this is not like a paid athlete where, you know, of course these NBA players, they're making millions of dollars. You're paying them money to, to work hard, but he doesn't get paid money to work hard. He just works hard just because that's who he is. And on top of that, he's paying the people money to work hard. So that's part of the, the Kung Fu in, in the Chinese culture. Because you even look in China, they work really hard and they get paid like one-tenth of what we get paid here. You know, like they'll make like 25 cents an hour or something like that. You know, they'll work 16-hour days. They're, fall they're falling asleep in the factory. You know, like they're working seven days a week. They're living in closets and small spaces. You know, and they work hard over there and, and basically Seagull is a demonstration of that gung fu that's in here in America. And that's pretty much the foundation of the discipline of this school. Is getting it from him, transfers to me, and then it's supposed to transfer to my children and to the, to the students to learn this discipline. And it's not, it's a non-violent discipline, a non-violent gung fu, because this is just biking, swimming, running. This is not fighting or anything like that. This is not like hurting other people. This is not even competing really with others. This is just something that you can just do on your own. You can just bike on your own, swim on your own, run on your own. It's not even about the other person. It's just to like, it's just, you're basically competing against time. If that, just to see, hey, you know, I got four hours. Can I get under four hours one of these years? And then you're just trying to compete against time. You know, when you got somebody like the same ball who's running so fast, he runs so fast that the other people can't even compete with him. So he just has to compete against time. He's trying to beat his best time. And the thing that's nice about these types of challenges is it's not hurting other people. And it's not even competing against other people. It's just competing against time. You're just trying to compete against time. And you're just trying to stay young. You know, everybody's getting old. You know, one day we'll be 80 years old. But we want to try to get our bodies to be younger you know so he might be 69 but his body is probably like 45 you know and that's because he trains so hard and he has that discipline you know it's about health so he's training for health he's not training to impress other people he's not training for money he's not training for recognition he's not training for for pride this is just what he does. This is what he. It's just like an everyday thing. Like, oh, you do a triathlon this year? Oh, again? Yeah. But like, honestly, I can't even do a triathlon because I don't even swim that well. And running, I don't like running. So I don't see myself doing a marathon either. I can't even do it, and I'm like, thirty. I'm thirty-seven. So he's like, almost double my age, doing all the stuff that I can't do. But then there's stuff that I can do that he can't do. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's just, it just yeah. goes hand in hand. Babe, I was you wondering if, yeah. if you and Seagung could give, um, each of you give a definition of what Gung Fu is. Like, give the definition of Gung Fu. Because a lot of people hear it and they, they immediately think of the combat aspect of it. So I was wondering if both yourself and if Seagung can explain what Gung Fu is. 
Who one do you want to go first? Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> you already explained about Kung Fu. Yeah. So, so Singh will go. She wants to do it again, I guess. Yeah, to give a definition. Because it, it, you, it, you gave a really quick description of it, but just All to right. clarify. So, from my studies of Kung Fu, it's, it's, not just, it's not really just about combat. The, 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 the word actually dates back to Confucius. So Confucius is actually Kung Fu Tzu, and he was a scholar, and they, that word came, originated from him to pretty much represent like extreme hard work in what you do. So Kung Fu is just basically like hard work and discipline, and you can apply that to many areas. So essentially, this is Si Gong's, Gong, one of his expressions of Kung Fu, you know, triathlon and marathon. My expression of Kung Fu just happens to have combat involved as well. And my, mine is a lifestyle. Combat, fitness, strength, I like cardio. Too. I like yeah. combat too yeah. because it's a kind of self-defense, you know. That's why I train with you too. Yeah. Because, you know, you have to, you know, get the, I mean, uh, know something how to defend yourself. Yeah, Some yeah. Some skills, you know. Yeah. Some technique. This is... You run a uh, bike, you know, cannot, I mean, uh, in, in case somebody try to attack you, you yeah. cannot defend yourself by riding the bicycle, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. So it's that, and, you know, Bruce Lee had his Kung Fu, Jack Chan had his, has his, Donnie Yen has his, I have mine, Seagong has his. So it's just that discipline, like, not just for one year, not even just for two years, not even five years, but like, it's a life discipline. That's the way that I see it. Like, a real Kung Fu master, you'll see them, like, 90 years old, and you're like, wow, like, that person is amazing at what he does and did for his whole life. That, to me, is like a Kung Fu master who just keeps progressing. And he's, he's pretty much that as far as his Kung Fu is concerned. It's just that our Kung Fu is not completely the same, we have like a unique expression of it. Like Angelina, for example, part of her Kung Fu is going to be soccer. That's for certain because she loves soccer. But I'm not a soccer person like that. You know, I like basketball. You know, and um, Brandon loves video games. So, you know, that's part of his Kung Fu, you know. So, but it's a, it's a, it's a personalized, artful expression. And you see it in my videos. But with him... We're not going to videotape him for four hours, five hours running the marathon. Yeah. And we're not going to videotape him for four hours swimming. But this is, these medals are like uh, evidence to prove that he actually did that. He completed that. And the technology is allowing us to see all his stats. And that's the great thing about technology. So there's, there's, there's that proof. In addition to looking at him and seeing how he looks and just how fit he is and everything, it's living proof that this is real. You know, like, I love biking, so I'll put on my app, and I'll mark every single mile that I bike. And right now, since I started marking my miles, I'm like 2,400 miles. So, like, maybe when I'm, like, 60, I'll try to get over 15,000 miles or something. So, it's like I'm marking my progress. This is, like, all marking his progress. And essentially, that's what he's paying the money for. Because he could run a marathon tonight if he wanted to. But that progress is not going to be marked but the Chicago Marathon, every single year they have it and they mark his progress every single year. You know, and that's the great thing about the technology. And that's my definition of Kung Fu, according to my studies, you know. Yeah. You were sharing um, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, listening to your mom share her story about her work ethic. And, um, and I remember you saying how powerful her Kung Fu is because of her work ethic for the many years that she put in and dedicated. Can you uh, talk a little <laughs> bit about elaborate that? Elaborate on that? Yeah, uh -huh, She yeah. don't want to get on video. Well, I mean, she doesn't have to be on video, but you can still, All because right, so, it's awesome uh, how, because how, you got, got it from your mom and your dad. How long have you worked at your, at your company? 45. 45 years, right? All right, so basically what I was talking about is my mom has her own Kung Fu. She's been working at her company for 45 years, and she still works there, you know, and based on her expression of what she goes through from a day-to-day -day process compared to, like, 
Also, how much money she's actually actually making. Like, for somebody to last at a job for that long is extremely uncommon. I mean, you could you could ask anybody that you know. Do you find anybody that's worked anywhere for 45 years straight? It's like you don't hear that. Don't hear that very much. You might hear 20 years if they work at the post office. Maybe you might know a police officer that's working at the you know been there for 15, 20 years. But 45 years at one place, and not just that, but they don't pay that well either. You know, like it's easy to work. It's not easy, but it's if you work somebody for 40, somewhere for 45 years and you're making half a million dollars or you're making a hundred thousand dollars then it's easier to work that long because you're making so much money. But imagine if, imagine if you're making like almost minimum wage working someone for 45 years. Like how much self-discipline that required to keep that going year after year. And not only that, but to go into work happy. You know, it's like that, that is like real, that's like major kung fu is just working so hard. You don't even get paid that well, but you find a way to make that working situation work for you, you find a way to, to find happiness in that. Because I think a lot of the Chinese, what they realize, that actually if we stayed in Hong Kong, we'd have it so much worse. Because over here I'm making minimum wage, which might be $10 an hour. But if I stayed in Hong Kong, I would have been making 15 cents an hour. And I would have had to work 16 hour days. Here you work 8 hour days, you make $10 an hour, $12 an hour. You get to drive a car, you get to own a home. Over there, you live in a closet. You don't have a car. You're making 15 cents an hour. You're working 16 hour days, working seven days a week. You're only allowed to have one child. There's no retirement. There's no 401k. There's no workers comp. There's no, like, there's nothing. Like, you, you, you're living just to, 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 to like, and, and for some way, they could still... Make ends meet. Yeah, you're just, you're just making ends meet. Like, there's really like no future. But then there's, some, there's something in their mind that gets them to still find peace and happiness. And that's a spiritual thing. Where they can still find joy in doing something, even though they're not even getting that much. And then the Americans are looking at that like, how can they even... You know, that's called slavery in America. You know, that's why they fight for rights. They fight for higher pay. They fight, they don't want to work for free. They want to, they, they need money. That's why these professional athletes make so much money. It's not considered slavery because you're getting paid to do that hard work. Back in the day, they make you work hard. They don't pay you any money. They, they put a, a chain around your neck and you don't have a life of your own. So, basically, when some of these Chinese people from Hong Kong, they immigrate to America, they see, like, wow, we have a good here. So then they learn to appreciate the little things. So if you're getting paid, if a Chinese person is getting paid $12 an hour to them, that's like getting paid $60 an hour. Because it, compared to China, that's a lot of money. So what I'm basically saying is that my parents have that gung fu, and that's why I have it. Because they work so hard and they appreciate the simple things in life and that taught me to appreciate the simple things like even though I'm making a lot of money a lot more money than I ever used to I still live as if I don't even make that much money because I don't really need the, it's not the money that makes me happy it's the lifestyle you know like I could just live just work out hang out with the kids hang out with you hang out with my parents and just work out, go to sleep, work out, go to sleep, work out, eat, <laughs> go to sleep, take a shower, work out. You know, it's like, I'm happy with what I'm doing. You know, and all these other things is just extra stuff that I don't really need, but it's just nice to have. It's nice to be able to, to drive a car when it's like zero degrees out. You know, it's nice to be able to ride a bike and not walk to work. You know, it's nice to be able to, to go out to eat rather than eat, like, macaroni and cheese or something. You know, like, it's nice to be able to just sit in a nice couch and, and make a video. 
you know, like, it's, it's just this lifestyle that my parents, that I learned, and then it became part of me, and it's then that I teach in the school, I teach to my students, I teach to my kids, is that you learn to appreciate the little things in life. And then when you make, like, when you make $10 an hour, it's almost to you, it's almost like $100 an hour. You know? So, that's, that's the gung fu that my mom has. You know, that is very rare. And the same thing with my dad, he worked at the same, he's retired now, but he worked at the same job for like, how long? <laughs> <laughs> So almost, almost 40 years. It's done, right? Company. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's still okay. done. Yeah. Yeah, the, 40 years, right? 40 years. So 40 yeah. years, yeah. and then he's retired now. My mom, 45 years, and she's not retired yet. She still keeps going. So yeah, that, that's the gung fu right there. And th this is the background. Like, you don't see them in videos that much, but this is the background, the foundation of the school and the teachings. And you see all these uh, medals right here. You know, so I want to keep it going. Is it still rolling or not? It's still rolling. So, like, if Seagun stops this stuff, I don't think I could do this. Maybe I'll have one of the kids do it to continue on <laughs> the years. <laughs> so that we can keep the medals going. But, you know, I'm not really a runner or a swimmer like that. But maybe Keo or Angelina or some, one of them. Like, if Seagun doesn't do it, then at least somebody in the family does it so we can get the medal back in to continue on the medals. You know what I'm saying? Get the medals gone. <laughs> so then everybody takes a break or something. Like, like one person does it one year, another person does it another year. As long as we get that medal, the next medal, it would be cool to keep it going. Yeah. You know, but I'm not a, I'm not a swimmer, that's for sure. But the, the running, I'm, I could probably do. Yeah. But So, Seagun, yeah. do you want to say anything to, like, encourage the viewers to um, like if there's something they love to do and you know how to go after it or you know any words of wisdom what I want to say he already said it mm -hmm. I don't have to I mean to repeat mm -hmm. yeah whatever you said that's what I want to say yeah, yeah. Okay. what about you I both um, Seagung and Mom, they inspire me a great deal. So, yeah, I'm just honored to be able to um, to know each of you and to spend time with you and to learn from you. And, um, yeah. So, so, is it still rolling? It's still rolling. All right, so we could just have everybody congratulate Seagung, shake his hand for getting the triathlon medal. Okay. Hurry up, run in here. Come on, come on, come on, before the camera goes. <laughs> come on, Angelina, jump up out of the chair, girl. All right, we got a little bit of time. The battery's about to die. Come on, kids, real quick. Oh, my God, Congratulations. Give a hug, give a handshake. <laughs> come on, run in here. Her battery is dying. <laughs> it's flashing, it's flashing. <laughs> Give him a hug, Angelina. And then, hug um, or a handshake. You want to just put the, metal, put the medals on him and just take a picture. Yeah. No, put this all the medals there. on it. Okay. No, put everybody. Did everybody come take in? Take the medals. Jack, yeah, put down the computer. Come in, so come in, cool. uh, sit next to Grandpa. I like this. This is awesome. I like this already. Jet, smack Grandpa a high five. <laughs> Jet, huh? smack Grandpa a high five. High five. Yeah, Grandpa. Right here. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. Metal. <laughs> we love to have metal. All right, awesome. Everybody say congratulations, Seagon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on in there, Mom. Yay. Grab, a, grab it. Grab it. Grab it. Grab some. All right. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Grab some before the camera goes dead. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. All right. So before we uh, before we close out, everybody say congratulations again. Ready? One, two, three. Congratulations! Woo! Congratulations, Seagun! Oh, I love it. It's still rolling.